six gun There was magic in his name And I always tried to be him When we played our cowboy games I stood in line to see him Right across our small town screen And in my mind's eye I rode with him in every scene And he would ride off in the sunset With that friendly western smile Ride off in the sunset No goodbyes Just so long for a while Howdy, partners. I'm Sunset Carson. You know that not too many years ago, this town and this land around here were the scene of some right hectic daily activities. Camera crews, electrician, producers, directors, stuntmen, makeup men, all working together to produce one of the most popular motion pictures in the first half of the 20th century. For those kids who grew up in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, and even the early 50s, the cowboy star was the number one hero. While reading about space flights was interesting, it seemed that going to the moon was something a hundred years or so away. But the cowboy hero, well, that was another matter. We knew he was real. After all, didn't we see him every Saturday up there on the screen? We couldn't grow up to be Captain Marvel or Buck Rogers. But if Ken Maynard and Roy Rogers could grow up to be cowboy stars, then that meant that we had a chance to do it too. During the silent years, William S. Hart was the first big cowboy star. Then came Tom Mix and his horse Tony. Then Ken Maynard and his daredevil riding. And then came Buck Jones, Bob Steele, Tim McCoy, and many others during the silent years. Then came the talkies, and we had Hoppy, Gene, and Roy, and many others, riding the reins to save the West from evil. I'm driving these horses. Today we're going to take a trip back to the golden days of the cowboy movies. And today, Tex Ritter is going to be our guy. He is the star of Three in the Saddle. By the time this movie was released, Tex was nearing the end of his Western movie career. He began in 1936 when producer Edward Finney signed him to do a series. After doing 32 films with Finney, Tex moved to Columbia and then to Universal. His last stop was at PRC, where he did a series of eight Texas Ranger Westerns. In these films, he was supported by Dave O'Brien as Dave Wyatt, Guy Wilkerson as Panhandle Perkins. Today's film is part of that series. PRC wasn't exactly on par with Republic, but many of their cowboy movies were enjoyable. I think you'll enjoy this one. Here it is, Three in His Saddle, starring Tex River.
Jack. Oh. Hello, Bart. When did you go into the stick-up business? There ain't no stick-up. Southwest stage lines took over this strip of land. So you're trespassing. You've got a lot of nerve posting a sign like that. This pass belongs to Peggy Barlow. It's part of her ranch. You mean it was, but it ain't no more. If you don't believe me, you talk to John Rankin. I'll talk to John Rankin, all right. But first, I'm driving these horses through. up around his neck, went three or four times around his body, and... Three against one isn't my idea of a fair fight, Panettle. Come on, let's even things up. We sure will. Well, I can lick them three hundred single handed. Hey, wait for me. Wait for me here. You... Hey, wait for me. Wait for me, you headless horse. <laughs> the old Indian trick.
You wait till I get my hands on them overs. Well, don't stand there with your mouth open. We got a long way to go. Start walking. Much obliged for helping me out. My name is Tex Haynes. I'm glad to know you. I'm Dave Wyatt. And uh, I'm his friend, Panhandle Perkins. Oh, glad to know you, Mr. Perkins. Oh, it's mutual. Uh, say, what was them galoots chasing you for? Oh, they work for the stage company. Any law against that? You two must be strangers here if you haven't heard of the trouble the ranchers have been having with the stage line. Yeah, we did hear something about it. That's why we drifted down from Pecos. Yeah, we're looking for work. And we ain't too particular what we do. Well, we can head back to the Tin Cup Ranch. It's agreeable with the owner. You're hired. Oh, uh, when I got untangled, I forgot to put my cattle catcher back on my saddle. Uh, I'll meet you at the ranch. First road to the right. I don't know what good it'll do you, but sit down and make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Have you thought over my offer? Well, I didn't have to think about it. Tim Cup Ranch just isn't for sale. You know, Miss Barlow, perhaps you don't appreciate my generosity. You see, the right-of-way that the state gave my company includes the land three miles on either side of this proposed stage road. Now, this Tin Cup property is within that area. So legally, I don't have to pay you a nickel. Mr. Rankin's only trying to be fair. You've got some nice buildings in it. He thinks you ought to be paid a little for them. <laughs> Your boss is certainly big-hearted, Dugan. It looks like the answer is still no. Now, according to law, Miss Barlow owns this place, and the state hasn't any right to turn it over to you or anybody else. Then I'll have the court condemn the land and evict it. Maybe I'll have something to say about that, Rankin. You're not taking over any part of this ranch. I'm sure that Peggy here would have given you the right of way for nothing if you'd have been decent about asking. Well, I offered her $10,000 for the buildings and equipment. And don't forget, the state gave me a franchise. Then talk to the state about it. You're wasting your breath here. Now get out and take this small eaten bodyguard along with you. Dan Brown, Dave White. How do you do? Hello? How are you, Dave? Oh, and uh, Panhandle Perkins. Hi. Hi, Panhandle. They're plenty handy with the guns. They're looking for work. I told them you might give them jobs. Well, the way he handled Bill Duke, and I'd say he was already working. <laughs> That's right. Say, Mr. Perkins doesn't happen to be a cook, does he? He? I should say not. Why? Why, he's the best cook in the country, ma'am, only he don't like to admit it. Oh, honest, Indian, Miss Barlow, I can't hardly boil water. 
I'm plumb sure the boys on your ranch wouldn't like my style of grub. Oh, I don't guess they'll object too much. They've been rustling their own grub lately. The last cook we had ran afoul of a southwestern stage line. They strung him up. Do you mind telling me a little more about your trouble with the stage line? Can't the law help you? Well, Miss Barlow here wrote to the governor several weeks ago. So far, nothing's happened. And Tex here wrote over from Mill Creek to help me. The ranchers should have started fighting a long time ago. Rankin has brought in a bunch of gun toters. Now it's up to us to do the same. Well, taking the law into your own hands, Tex, can only make matters worse. You'll change your mind after you've been here a while. This ranch, the Tin Cup, is the only ranch in this valley that Rankin and his killers haven't grabbed, with or without a court order. You know, your letter to the governor could have gone astray. Well, I don't object to the stage line running the road through here. Transportation will help the country. But we're certainly not going to sit back and have Rankin come in and steal the land. Say, Tex, what about that meeting? Oh, I sent word to the ranchers to be at the Jubilee Trading Post in the morning. Fine. I'll draw up a petition, and we'll appoint someone to take it direct to the governor. I'll show you where you can bunk. Thanks for the job, man. You're welcome. Yet. They'll be along. Everybody got word about the meeting. Well, Mr. Manning, this is Dave Wyatt. He's working for us. Glad to know you, Mr. Manning. You joined a good cause, Wyatt, but it's going to be a hard fight. I can believe that. Ever since Rankin started putting a stage line through this district, we've had nothing but trouble. Many of the ranchers have had their homes burned and their friends and relatives murdered. I'm in favor of talking with hot lead. Oh, that's the trouble. There's been too much gunfighting around here now. We've been working on a different idea. I don't think the governor knew the ranching situation when he turned over the right of way to the stage line. Dan here has drawn up a petition for the ranchers to sign. Then we'll appoint a committee and take it direct to the state capitol. Well, what's on your mind? I've got a paper here to serve on Miss Barlow. You mean the stage line is finally filed suit to condemn the Tin Cup Ranch? They've even gone farther than that. Miss Barlow has to be off of the property in 10 days. I hope you understand, as the deputy sheriff, I'm only acting according to law. Oh, we understand, all right. And if the law is going to help Rankin in his crooked outfit swindle the ranchers, we'll handle things our own way. Take it easy, Tex. I got something here I'd like to show you. Look out, he's going for his gun. to show you a petition to the governor he'd drawn up. Tex is right. Rankin, you and your men better get out of here. I don't want any more gunplay in my place. Next time, you pick someplace else to serve your papers. The sheriff ought to be back by sundown. I'm going to see that this costs you your deputy badge. Here's the bourbon you ordered, Mr. Rankin. Pay for it, or shall I put it on your bill? Charge it. Too bad about Bill Dugan getting killed. 
but rather fortunate for us. What do you mean? Tex Haynes has put himself on the wrong side of the law. You mean it could be fixed so that Tex Haynes won't be around when the court gives us the legal right to take over Peggy Barlow's ranch? Could be. Of course, Tex will fight. But in the fight, he might get killed. The sheriff's back in town, and he's on it. He'll believe any story that you tell him. And I'm just hankering to tell him just how Bill Dugan was killed. Well, don't worry, Peggy. Sheriff Bagley here. Nothing wrong will happen. Howdy, Tex. Howdy, uh, Sheriff. Mr. Rankin, these citizens have sworn out a warrant for your arrest. Uh, arrest? What are the charges? Murder. The killing of Bill Dugan. It's a trick. I'll say it is. Reach. All of you. Unbuckle your gun belts and let them drop to the floor. You're under arrest, Tex. Shut up. Do as I tell you. Use your left hand. Keep the right one up. Get rid of their guns. You're making a mistake, Tex. You certainly are. You surrender peaceful and we'll see that you get a fair trial. There's not a chance, Sheriff. Nobody gets a fair trial around here except Rankin and his gang. But I'm changing things. Starting now. We're backing you up, Tex. Thank you. In jail, I'd be a dead pigeon. Put loose. I can help you, Peggy. I'll be back. He's a fugitive from justice. Come on, let's get him. Aren't you going after that murderer? No, you got too much of a head start. And I'll organize a posse and go after him myself. You probably will. But remember, Rankin, in Texas called, he gets a fair trial. I ain't waiting for no trial. He shot my friend in cold blood, and I'm offering a thousand dollar reward for Tex Haynes, dead or alive. Hmm. considering we only have a few more days before the law evicts us and turns the land over to the stage company. Rankin will never get the Ten Cup Ranch. One of my men heard that he's coming in on the morning stage from the Capitol tonight. Oh. Hi, Panhandle. How's Dave? How should I know? I ain't his keeper. Oh, I left him back at the bunkhouse, in case of any of Rankin's men showing up. <laughs> I don't know what I'd have done without him, Tex. He's practically been running the place. Oh, I see. Well, if I'm going to stay hit out from the law, we better get the rest of the supplies in, Panhandle. Supplies, grub, that's all I've heard of lately. Well, you won't be hearing about it much longer. If the Southwestern stage have their way about it, you'll be out of a job in a few days. See, Tex? Yeah. Him and a bunch of the ranchers are holed up at that old miner shack on Gold Mountain. Rankin is getting in from the state capitol on tomorrow's stage, and Tex knows about it. 
From a remark he let slip, Rankin's going to meet with quite a surprise. Well, I guess I'm going to have to ride out and pick up Tex before he gets in so deep he can't clear himself. You're going to have to do more than pick up Tex. I remember something about us being rangers sent out here by the state to investigate some ranchers that are breaking the law. What do we do? We help them. No gun it, why don't we make a bunch of arrests and go back home? We are going to make some arrests, Panhandle, but it's not going to be ranchers. I've got a hunch Rankin is using that right away to swindle them out of their homes. We're going to prove it and lay all the evidence before the government. I hope you know what you're doing, because this cooking is getting me down. It wouldn't be so bad if I didn't have to eat my own grub. <laughs> I want some action. All right, I'll give you some action. First thing in the morning, you ride out to the Ten Cup Pasture, catch a black horse, bring him to Indian Rocks. We're going to start a little surprise of our own. Surprise? Hold it. Pull up and reach. Drop your gun on the floor and get out. All right, driver, start moving. What's this all about, anyway? Shut up and walk over to those rocks. Get mounted. Mr. Rankin. What happened to Rankin? Where is he? Some hombre dressed in black and riding a black horse stuck me up and took him off the coast. Go ahead. <laughs> Haynes had ever gotten his hands on me, my life wouldn't have been worth a plug nickel. That's what I figured. Now, if you don't mind, I'll take those papers you're carrying. I haven't got any papers that would interest you. You're wrong. You've been to the Capitol to close a deal with the Fakers Land Syndicate, and the contracts are in your pocket. How do you know? Never mind. All right, Rankin, come on. I'm putting you back on the stage. Riding with the end of Oak Flats after all. Wish somebody make up their minds. This is getting monotonous. <laughs> Mr. Rankin can explain. All right, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Section 243, County of Granger, do hereby agree to sell to the Texas Land Syndicate for the sum of $500,000 all land in the above-mentioned district, with the exception of a certain designated right-of-way. 
which is owned and controlled by the Southwestern Stage Line. Owner, owner. Hey, two men are supposed to sign this. See, that means that Rankin has got a partner, and they're planning on selling out the ranches around here for $500,000. Yeah, I had a hunch somebody was behind Rankin. The contract ain't signed. How are we going to find his partner? Well, maybe this will help. It's a statement from Rankin's bank. His account shows less than $1,000. Yeah, but he offered Peggy Barlow 10,000 smackers to pay for that 10 cup range. That's right. And that's where the unknown partner comes in. He's apparently financing Rankin's land grab. Not only that, but he's somebody around here. Yeah, but who? Well, two and two make four, Panhandle. This contract requires two signatures. He had to bring it back here to be signed. Oh, but everybody around here is broke. Uh, Jim Manning isn't. His Jubilee trading post is coin money. Oh, it ain't Manning. Well, he's a friend of the ranchers. Hey, I'll bet I can find out who it is. You know, I'll bet you can too, but don't try. I'm gonna walk over and talk to Peggy. She'll probably be able to tell me something about Manning. Yeah, you go ahead. I'm gonna ride into Oak Flat and see what I can find out there. I'm certainly glad it was you, Dave. I was afraid it might be the sheriff or some of Rankin's men. Why uh, don't you use your head, Tex? Coming back to the ranch is the worst thing you could have done. I don't see Panhandle. I have a hunch you double-crossed me that day and took Rankin off the stage. Hey, you're his pal. Maybe you know something about it. Well, I know this. Whoever kept you from getting your hands on Rankin did you a good turn. Well, that's your idea. But if it was you, you keep your good ideas to yourself from now on. Say, look, Tex, I happen to like you. And I'm convinced the ranchers around Oak Flats are getting a real deal. Now, I might be able to prove it if you'll work with me. What do you want me to do? There's a price on your head. Posses are out trying to get that reward. Get back to your hideout and stay there. I'll handle Reagan and his men. <laughs> You must think I'm loco. Aside from Peggy here and my men, Panhandle was the only person that knew that Rankin was coming in on the stage today. So I think I'll hang around and have a little talk with him. You're wrong, Tex. You're leaving here right now, but not for your hideout. I'm taking you to jail. Jail? I thought you were supposed to be a friend of ours. That's why I'm taking you. Well, Peggy. town and turn him over to the sheriff. Oh, uh, just a minute, Bart. I'm the one who caught Haynes, so I reckon I'll have something to say about what's to be done with him. I'm taking care of the prisoner. Well, I reckon wife's afraid he'll miss out on the reward. Don't worry. I'll tell the sheriff you're entitled to the money. You ought to be proud of yourself. Oh, cut out the bouquets. 
Now you get going. And if you make a break, it's going to be too bad for you. Just save the state the cost of a trial. You're staying here. I'm afraid you're wrong, Bart. There's something in my shirt pocket that might interest you. A ranger? Right the first time. Now, if you don't mind, I'll take charge of the prisoner. Well, uh, guess I can't stop you. Why didn't you tell us what you were in the first place? Well, it really didn't fit into my plans. The governor got so many letters of protest from the ranchers around here, he sent me out to investigate. Bart, when you get back to town, you can tell Rankin there'll be no more ranches taken over by the southwestern stage line. I'm turning the whole thing over to the grand jury. I'll relay the message. But you better have Tex Haynes in jail by night, or somebody will be investigating you. Handled Perkins. I should have known there's rangers around when I saw that long string beam. He jailed me once in Sandy Bottom. Come on, we're getting to ranking quick. Right in your personal papers was very stupid, John. You should have hidden them after you got on the coach. Well, how was I to know I was going to be held up? You must have talked out of turn. Somebody knew that you were returning from the capital this morning. Have you any idea as to the identity of the black rider? Oh, stop your worrying, will you? The papers that the rider took off of me will in no way tie you in with the deal. No. That contract shows that you have a partner. The bank statement you lost proves that you were practically broke. All right, let's sell off all the lands that we have the title to and clear out. We can't do that. The Pecos Syndicate won't buy one acre until our company gets that right away. And the right away isn't complete without the Tin Cup Ranch. Well, we'll be in possession of the Tin Cup tomorrow morning. I'm going over to my office and get our papers together. Yes, I'm Rankin. I am Richard Richards, special representative of the Pecos Land Company from the state capitol. Sit down. I don't remember meeting you when I was at the capitol. No, I was away at the time, uh, buying up a million dollar property for my company. Oh. Now, uh, about that contract and those deeds, you have them ready? Well, not yet. Not ready? Why, this delay is liable to cost you the entire deal, Mr. Rankin. I haven't much time. Uh, that is, I'm leaving by the next stage, so perhaps you'd better introduce me to your associate. Oh, come, come, Mr. Rankin. It's imperative this business be completed at once. Very well, I shall depart. I can see you're not a very good businessman. Wait, Mr. Richard. I'll introduce you to my partner. Now, you're talking turkey. Uh, uh, 
phrase I picked up in Plymouth when I was there for Thanksgiving. Oh, you had wild turkey, eh? Yeah, very, very wild. representative of the Pecos Land Company. Well, I'm glad to know you, Mr. Richard. How do you do? Come into my private office. Jerry, don't let anyone disturb us. All right, boss. Well, Mr. Rankin, now that I've met your partner, I think I'll take a walk around your prosperous town while I'm waiting for you to finish your business. Oh, don't. You've got to have a drink with us first, Mr. Richard. We've got to toast the success of our deal, you know. Now, gentlemen, I must go to the stage line and make arrangements for my transportation. You seem to be in an awful hurry to get away. I am. I, I mean, I have other business that's very important. Other business? Yes, I have a message for a friend of mine. Have you seen Rankin? He's in there with Mr. Manning and he don't want to be disturbed. Oh, he don't, huh? No. Well, I'm afraid somebody's going to be disturbed. You wait here. Stay where you are, Mr. Perkins. Why, sir, what is the meaning of this? Put away that gun, Bart. This is Mr. Richards, a representative of the Pegasus Land Company. You mean a representative of the law. That panhandle Perkins, a ranger. He's a ranger? Yes. And so is his partner, Dave Wyatt. They were sent to Oak Flats by the governor to investigate us. Where is Wyatt now? He's bringing Tex Haynes into the lockup. He caught him out at the Tin Cup Ranch. Well, with Haynes in jail, that'll make things easy for us. Oh, no, it won't. When Wyatt gets to town, He's going to issue an order stopping all land transfers, and he's going to turn our records over to the grand jury. That means that we can't complete our deal with the Pecos Syndicate. Oh, yes, we can if we work fast. The Tin Cup Ranch has been condemned. The 10 days' notice expires today. We can get the sheriff to legally evict Miss Barlow today before Wyatt has a chance to stop things. Then with the deeds in our pocket, we can go to the Capitol, complete our deal with the Pecos Syndicate, and before the grand jury has a chance to straighten out the mess, we'll be out of the country. Let's get the sheriff and hit the Tin Cup Ranch right away. We'll get the boys. You keep this scarecrow here. Well, you better go out the back way. Use the Sand Hill Trail so you don't run into Texan wire. When it gets dark, get rid of the corpse. All right. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. You can't do that. It's murder. Besides, it's again the law. Yeah. That's right, isn't it? I wonder what's the best way to vote you all. Well, you don't need to start thinking about that. It ain't dark yet. Well, but it won't be long. in town will never know when you kick the bucket. Locked up, Dave. Till your trial. You're a real pal. Thanks. <laughs> ah, 
that card would send a man's back, you'd probably do better. You think you're funny, don't you? Let me tell you something. I'm not the kind of a bird that would stab a man in the back. So I'm just going to work on your neck, and you've got plenty of it. Oh, I have a heart now. That's what I'm going to do. Yours. me joining you, making it two-handed. No. Do you mind if I sing a song? No. Is that your guitar? No. Well, do you mind if I play it? No. Handing it to me? No. Do you uh, know the prisoner's song? No.
what I tell you, Tex. My way is the right way. So far, there hasn't been any right way. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, the first that'll do. One, two, three, four. One, two, one. What's up, Van Hammer? How are they talking? Bert and Jim Manning and Rankin are partners in that land grabbing deal. They're headed for the Ten Cup Ranch right now. They're going to throw Miss Peggy off the place, then they're going to the state capital and sell out to that Peckers Land Company. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. This guy's had me prisoner for an hour. Now he's the prisoner. This is the showdown we've been waiting for. You go to my hideout and get the ranchers. We'll meet you at the Ten Cup Ranch. How about it, Dave? Jenkins knows all about it. I saw Bart heading towards your office just before I left town. He told you about Wyatt, didn't he? That's why you were saying to me to draw up these papers and get Peggy off the ranch. She's lying. Bart didn't tell me anything. And believe her before I would you. And I'm not making a move till I catch Dave Wyatt and check his credentials. We're taking over this ranch and we're doing it right now. Taking possession. Get ready to move this stuff out of here. What about the law? He's got nothing to say about it. What's going on here? It's Miss Barlow's move. You're wrong. It's my move. <laughs> Yes. 
Why, yes, you can just address it to the Tin Cup brand. <laughs> Let's look at some scenes from next week's show, His Brother's Ghost. Hit that, Andy? Uh, no, you dang fool. I'm making mud pies. Uh, I'll have to get a doctor for you. Until we see you again, partners, so long, goodbye, and may God bless you. There was justice in his six-gun. There was magic in his name. And I always tried to be him. We played our cowboy games I stood in line to see him Right across our small town screen And in my mind's eye I rode with him in every scene With that friendly western smile Right up in the sunset No goodbyes Just so long for a while